In Turkey lives the most remarkable painter, Esref Armagan, an artist born without eyes. No one can call me blind. I can see more with my fingers than sighted people can see with their eyes. Esref proves that you don't need eyes to see. At the University of Toronto, perception and cognition psychologist Dr. John Kennedy is investigating the abilities of an astounding man, Esref, the blind painter. Esref is a blind man who has been drawing pictures since he was a child. He draws astonishingly well. Many people would say he draws better than many sighted people. Esref lives in Turkey. Esref Armagan has a genetic mutation that caused him to be born without eyes. This seeming defect has given him the most remarkable power. While he paints a landscape he cannot see, this artist is changing everything science has assumed about vision. Esref has never seen light. In the picture is that I start by imagining shapes that I have already felt. Then I form those shapes into the painting I want to create. I make a plan of the picture completely in my head before I start to draw it. What's astounding about Ezra's paintings is his use of color, shadow, and composition. And most importantly, perspective. The way he draws objects receding into the distance. It is not meant to be possible to paint such recognizable and well-composed images without eyes. At Harvard Medical School's Neurology Center, scientists are mystified by Ezra's abilities. They want to scan his brain in order to find out how he does it. Esref is doing something that we thought was locked in the visual brain and was only possible if you had visual input. And it's the way Esref grapples with three-dimensional space that has the scientists particularly excited. But Esref wishes that people would pay more attention to what he paints, not how he can paint. He wants to be known as a great artist in his own right. I want to be remembered as a person who was able to see the world with their fingertips. I want to be remembered for my art. But for now, he's agreed to help the scientists. And Dr. Kennedy has devised a most ambitious experiment. He wants to find out if Ezraf truly understands perspective. And my experiment is going to be asking Ezraf to draw a particular building in Florence, in Italy, that was the source, the origin of the discovery of perspective, how we show depth in pictures. In 1413, Filippo Brunelleschi stood on the steps of the Duomo, the great cathedral he designed and built. He looked across the square at the baptistry, an octagonal Roman structure. It was this building that finally unveiled to him the equation for perspective. The complex geometry makes it extremely difficult to draw, even if you can see. Can he tackle a complicated object like the baptistry and handle all its parts and draw it and get all three dimensions of space and get them right? If he can, this man is astounding. Ezref, the blind painter, has arrived in Boston. He's agreed to meet the world-renowned neurology team at Harvard. They're amazed by him and want to know how a man without eyes can paint such incredible pictures using scale and perspective.
Their experiment will involve putting Ezraf in an MRI scanner, asking him to draw and observing the activity in his brain. Ezraf must remain as still as possible so they can get a clear image of his brain. As he draws a picture, the scientists are riveted by what they see on the monitors. Regions of his brain that shouldn't have any activity due to his blindness react in an extraordinary way. The visual parts of the brain, the ones that for normal sighted people light up like Christmas trees when we're looking at things, those became alive and excited and incredibly dynamic whenever Eshref was thinking of drawing in perspective. What Ezref's MRI results reveal is something groundbreaking. Ezref's brain shows us that vision involves more than just the information brought in through our eyes. Vision, it turns out, also involves our ability to understand space. <laughs> Bravo! What Ashraf is showing us is that we misunderstood vision. So we thought pictures are creatures of vision because they're dealing with distance and direction and angle. And now we realize all of those things are available to touch as well. And so we can have tactile pictures as well as visual pictures. As Vim forges through the frozen wasteland, a blind man from Turkey is going to attempt to outdo Filippo Brunelleschi, the most important architect of the Renaissance. I'm going to ask Esref to sit here where Brunelleschi was and draw this building. John? Esref! How are you? How nice to see you. We have so much to do. There is a really interesting building right beside us. And I'm going to ask you to draw it. First, we've got to find out the shape of the building. Mm -hmm. There's the sign. Right? Then you come to the corner. And then it goes at an angle. Ezref has been given no prior clues about this building. He's entered into this experiment without knowing what he was going to be asked to do. What Ezref must do is draw the sides of the baptistry upwards and downwards so that the lines converge on the horizon. This is what Brunelleschi did, and this is what even now most sighted people get wrong. Okay, Eshref, what I would like you to do is to draw the baptistry as if you're standing in front and the roof is far above your head and you're in front of one wall of the building. I'm you. Okay, go for it. For Esref, this is the moment of truth. He must draw the bottom two lines converging upward towards the top. Esref Armagan has just set his place in history. He has outdone Filippo Brunelleschi a renaissance master. Okay. <laughs> bravo, bravo, yeah. Joking, <laughs> This is a moment that happened first 600 years ago. The next time it happened was today. <laughs> 